The Devils have fire GM ratio. To some surprise, but me, not so much here. You don't get a chance at two rebuilds without some sort of interim success in between the two. And that's kind of the case we're starting to see here unfold for the Devils right now. Make no mistake about it. Shiro has done a very good job at acquiring talent via trades over the course of his tenure with the Devils. I mean, you look back, you say Taylor Hall for Larson, uh, Paul Mary for a second and a third. I thought the Gusev and Subban trades were really friendly trades once they was done as well. Now, granted, no one expected Subban to just face plant and have the worst year of his career this season. And maybe you can pin that back on the, you know, the now fired John Hunt. Lines. But that being said, I do think Shiro has a skill set to be a GM, a skill set that is being a guy that can inherit the team, a playoff contender more specifically, and he can make a few trades and turn it into a Stanley Cup contender. But the thing is, building a team is more than just going out there and, you know, acquiring guys from trade or signing them in free agency. And that's where the road starts to get bumpy here for Ray Shiro. Since Shiro has taken over as the Devils GM in 2015, he has controlled the reins to five Devils draft classes. In that time, the Devils have had a top 17 or better pick in every single year. If you take out the number two or the two number one overall picks that the Devils have had in that time, which, you know, many will agree is a consensus pick around the league before the draft even happens months before beforehand here the most productive draft pick the devils have had in that time is jesper pratt who has had 29 goals 83 assists or 83 points in 162 games with the devils which you know it's very good production from a sixth overall or sixth round pick but when you look down the list and see that pavel zaka the guy the devils took sixth overall in what was the most stacked draft class probably of our generation is the only other devils draft pick to have more than 13 career points since that time out of players that ray shiro's devils have drafted again no, you got to say minus he sure and Hughes here the two number one overall picks but Shiro has shown zero ability to draft and develop players since being part of this devil's organization I mean again you say those trades made they were great and all but they were trades a playoff contender makes I mean yeah sure I'm a big fan of the Subban deal big fan of the Gusev trade as I mentioned before but those are trades a team who is you know they're bubble playoff teams they're one player away they're two players we need a defenseman we're really good right now we're out of defenseman to this team we're gonna be in great shape we're pretty solid here off Offensively, we had another four. We're just going to be that much better. Add a little bit of depth to the team. But that was not the case here for the Devils. The Devils finished in dead last place in the division last year. And they're going in here making moves in the offseason, which was clear moves. I was saying, hey, we got to win right now. We got to become a contender. It was almost like a last gasp of air here for Shiro to an extent. And you've seen what happens when you make those trades and the team still does not perform. They're still worst team in the division. What happens? I consider that a big problem. You got multiple aspects as a GM to control here and he failed miserably at one of them as far as i'm concerned and i think the final straw here for me was this like we said he was doing a great job with the trades he was doing good but then you look at this taylor hall trade well did they get something for taylor hall yes but you look what they got was a first round pick a conditional pick and the players now the thing was the second conditional pick and this bothered me from the get-go here was a conditional pick that said either arizona had to what advance in the playoffs not only did they have to do that, but they had to do that and Taylor Hall had to sign with them for that conditional pick to turn into a first round draft pick. That was a mistake. That was a mistake and a half as far as I'm concerned. This is a proven player in the league. If you're getting them to sign him to sign with another team, you get another first round draft pick. Just like I, like I remember the Blue Jackets with Duchesne last year. They gave up a first to rent him, but if he would have signed with the Blue Jackets, the um, what, it was an Ottawa, Ottawa would have gotten another first round draft pick. Why? Because you just got another seven years out of a really good player. That's what you are. Eight years, seven years, eight years. You got to get something in that. And I think that was a mistake because you look at everything in that trade. Now, Grant, they was going to get that regardless because the only thing that ends up changing is that conditional pick. So they're saying, you know, if we get an extra seven years of Taylor Hall, the only thing you're going to get is a second round pick to a first round pick or, or not, or you know, a second round pick, potentially a first round pick. If we do good in playoffs, that was a mistake. And for me, the bottom line is this. We brought it up. He's made really good moves, but the Devils lack the in-house talent to make any sort of noise in the league. The best thing I can really say about this is they made all these moves. Think of, uh, I don't know, Florida, or Florida's not really doing the hottest. They're, they're working on it. But Florida's an example. You know, they went and got Bobrovsky. They didn't go sign Bobrovsky and expect him to just make that team good. No, they had Huber, they had Barkov, they had Ekblad. They had these younger players that they drafted. They got from, you know, building from within that we brought up that they expected to flourish. And Bobrovsky was going to be that cornerstone 
throwing guy back there in net for them to help them win games or you look at the Leafs you didn't say oh the Leafs have Tavares now they're going to be the best team in the or now they're going to be competitive no they was going to be competitive without Tavares because they drafted Matthews they drafted Marner they got Nylander they have Riley they had these other pieces already on the team ready to win and Tavares just made them that much more scary of a team and that was where the devil's problem was yeah they picked these guys up but they didn't have the in-house talent that they could expect to also you know provide the depth or provide the eliteness this team needed 